Hello everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good day to every one of you. Welcome to my video. So basically this is a continuation of a lecture video for chapter 4, Induction Motor. So my name is Dr. Nor Zulaini Binti Muhammad and this is my email address. So you can just feel free to email me whenever you have a question regarding the content of this video. Okay. So basically in this video, uh, we are going to talk cover only on the subtopics of power flow diagram okay all right so let's move to the subtopics of today which is the power flow diagram so we just consider the equivalent circuit model of the induction motor okay so input to the induction motor comes from a three phase supply okay so here you have a input supply so this is the per phase terminal voltage so here is a input power to the induction motor okay so the secondary winding of the induction motor is short so here the secondary winding is short so there will be no electrical output instead the output will be only mechanical output okay so that's why in the induction motor you don't have any electrical output but you have a mechanical output here okay but in at the at the input supply, you have an electrical input. Okay. Alright. So, the power flow diagram is shown as per below. So, basically, if you have an induction motor just like this, you have a motor input which is P in. Okay. So, here you have a motor input. Okay. So, and then the power, the motor input will be uh, since since your your circuit will be have two different uh, parts which is stator part and also the rotor part. So, that's why the motor input will be Go to the stator and also you have another part which is rotor. Okay. In the stator, there will be losses. Okay. So, the losses we call as a stator copper losses. PSCL. SCL stator copper losses. Okay. So, the power that uh, PSCL plus PC. PC is a core losses or we can also call it as a iron losses. Okay. So, basically, all these losses is due to the heat in the winding. And also heat due to the iron losses. Okay. Alright. And then basically the uh, the PSCL, which is the stator copper losses, happen at here at the RS, which is uh, the stator winding resistance. Okay. Alright. And then for the PC, which is the core losses, is due to the RC, which is uh, the stator core loss resistance. Okay. So the PC happen here, losses uh, losses of the PC happen here, and losses of the uh, stator copper loss is happen here. Alright, okay. So the input power minus the losses, so you are left with the input to the rotor. Okay, so it will be input to the rotor, or we call it as a PA gap. Okay, rotor input power RIP. Alright, okay. So basically, we call it as an air gap power. Alright. So the input to the rotor, there will be also losses in the rotor. Okay. So you have since the rotor also have a um, resistance. Uh, sorry, you also have a rotor circuit resistance here. So there will be rotor copper losses here. Okay. So there will be losses here. Okay. And then the rest will be the mechanical power. So this is the Power that developed by the motor. Uh, in sorry, this is the developed power. Uh, produced by the induction motor. We call it as a mechanical power. And then the mechanical power happen at this R two multiply with one minus F divided by S. Okay. All right. And then due to the rotation of the rotor because you know that uh, rotor is moving part so there will be rotation at the rotor so there will be also a windage and also friction losses we call it as a p mu okay so the mechanical power minus the p mu so the balance will be the motor output which is the p out okay so this is basically the power flow diagram for the induction motor Okay, so the power flow diagram, or also we can call it as a PFD, is normally represented as a fishbone. Okay, so how to draw the fishbone? Basically, you can draw, you can start with a straight line. Okay, 
So first of all, you have a input power to the induction motor. Alright. And then you have two different losses in the stator part. Okay, you have a uh, power, uh, losses of the stator copper losses. And also you have a core losses due to the stator winding. Okay. And then the P in minus the losses. So you are left with the P air gap. Or you can also call it roto input power. So this is the input power that go to the roto pipe. Alright. And then in the roto, there will be also losses due to the re uh, resistance uh, and also winding in the roto, uh, roto pipe. So we call it as a roto copper loss. Okay. And then the PA gap minus these losses. So you are left with the PM. PM is a mechanical output. You, or we can also call it as a developed output power. Sorry, developed power by the uh, P developed by the induction motor. Okay, so PM. Alright. So due to the rotation of the rotor, there will be also friction losses. Okay, there, because, that, because there is a friction, there is a, 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 a windage, everything. So, there will be P mu losses there. Okay. Windage losses. So, finally, the final output is the P out. Output power of the induction motor. Alright. So, basically, this is the uh, fishbone that represents the power flow diagram of the induction motor. Okay. So, the branch here. So, this branch basically indicate the losses happen in the induction motor. Okay, Okay. so after we had understand about the power flow diagram, then based on the above equivalence occurred, we can obtain the power equations. Okay, so since we know the uh, stator copper losses happen at the RS, okay, and then the core losses happen at the RC, the roto copper losses happen here, and also the mechanical output power happen here. So, based on this, we can obtain the power equations. Okay, so usually, basically, the P in, uh, input power to the induction motor is given by square root 3, multiply with V line to line, multiply with I line, cos theta. Okay, so why you have square root 3 here? Because uh, basically, the input supply is coming from the uh, three-phase supply, but here is a per phase. Okay, so we just uh, consider uh, the formula is square root 3 multiplied by VI cos theta. Okay. Or, you can also uh, use the formula 3 multiplied with ES phase. Okay. If you had a convert from a V line to line to the phase voltage, then you can use the formula of 3 multiplied with phase voltage multiplied with I1. So, this I1 line voltage multiplied with cos theta. Okay. So, this is the formula of the input power. Okay. For the PSCL, here, you can use the formula of 3i squared r. So, in this case, i is i1, r is rs or r1, r of the stator pipe. Okay. And then for the PC, core losses is 3 multiply with the voltage. Voltage here is the E s squared divided by rc. Okay. And then for the PRCL, for the roto copper losses, is equal to 3i squared r. So, in this case, i is i2, r is r2. Okay? Alright. And then for the PA gap, okay, the PA gap happen at here, this whole thing. Okay? Input to the roto. Okay? So, if you r2, you add on with the r2 multiply with 1 minus s over s, then you are getting r2 divided by s. Okay? So, that's why here, 3 i2 squared multiplied with r2 over s. Okay, since the formula is 3i I squared r, so i is i2, r is r2 minus r2 divided by s. Okay, how to get r2 divided by s? Because r2 plus r2 multiplied with 1 minus s over s, you simplify this 2, so that's why you are getting r2 divided by s. Okay, so this is the formula of the PA gap. Okay, and then for the PM, the mechanical output power happen at this resistor. So, that's why you have 3I squared R. So, in this case, I is I2. R is R2 multiplied with 1 minus S divided by S. Okay, right. So, this is the mechanical 
power PM. So finally, the P out, okay, based on the fish bone, you know, P out will be equal to PM minus the P mu. P mu is actually the friction losses. Okay, alright. So substituting these equations, okay, so all these equations, if you substitute, you are obtained PM. Okay, so in this case from here, PM, PM will be equal to 3i2 squared r2. So this one is actually equivalent to the PRCL. Okay, so here we present the PRCL. So that's why you can have PM will be equal to PRCL multiplied with 1 minus S divided by S. Okay, or you also know that the PRCL over S over S, over S will be equal to the PA gap, right? So, 3I2 squared R2 divided by S will be equal to PA gap. Okay, so PM will be equal to PA gap multiplied with 1 minus S. Okay, so this is are the alternative equation that you can use to find the value of the mechanical power. Okay, alright. So, for example, let's say you have a question, uh, the question given to you that you don't have the value of R2, you don't have the value of R1, but you have the value of the rotocopper losses, okay? You have the value of the slip, then you can find the mechanical power, okay? Or maybe you are given the value of PA gap, okay? You are given the value of slip, then based on the these two value, you can find the value of the Mechanical power. Alright. Okay. And then, uh, based on this equation, you can also rewrite it as a uh, PA gap will be equal to the PM divided by 1 minus S or the PA gap will be equal to the PRCL divided by S. Okay. So, this is uh, alternative equation. alternative equation based on the above power equations. Alright. Okay. So, finally, the formula for the efficiency is given by P output divided by P input. Okay? Alright. So, we are going to uh, learn on how to use all these uh, power equations. Okay? In order to solve the power flow diagram problem analysis. Okay? We are going to see in details in the next following example. Okay. So, for example 4.4, the question here, you have a 460 volt. 25 horsepower, 60 hertz, 4 pole, Y connected induction motor has the following impedance per phase referred to the stator circuit. Okay. Alright. So, in this case, this is the V line to line. Okay. Alright. So, for the calculation, you need to convert from V line to line to the V phase first since it is a Y connected induction motor. Okay. So, this is all the uh, value that refer to the stator circuit. Okay, so in this case, the total mechanical and core losses is 1.1 kilowatt. Okay, uh, for a slip of 2.2%, you need to find the speed, the stator current, the power factor, the develop and the output power. Okay, so this is the PM, this is the PR, and then finally, you need to calculate the efficiency. Okay, so let's uh, see the solution. Uh, first of all, you need to find the speed, the speed of the Induction motor basically represent the NR, okay? So, since uh, the value, uh, sorry, since the question didn't give you the synchronous speed, you need to calculate the synchronous speed first. Synchronous speed will be equal to 120 multiplied with the frequency 60 divided by the pole 4. So, the synchronous speed is 1800 RPM, okay? So, based on the formula of the slip, you can uh, rearrange it to find the value of the and R, the rotor speed. Okay, so the rotor speed will be equal to the um, synchronous speed minus the slip given from the question is 2.2%. 2.2 is equal to 0 0.022 multiplied with the NS. So finally, you get the rotor speed is equal to 1760 RPM. Okay, alright, so this is the speed of the induction motor. Alright, for the stator current, okay, remember you need to um you need to choose whether to use this circuit or the equivalent circuit. Okay, so basically based on the question, it didn't mention 
uh, it just mentioned that all this value is a constant in ohm per first refer to the stator so that's why you need to use this circuit okay rather than use the circuit that we move the rc and xm to the front okay that one we call it as an equivalent circuit but here based on the question you need to use this um circuit all right okay so first of all you need to find the phase voltage so first voltage is uh, v line to line divided by square root 3 so the es phase will be equal to 265.58 volt right okay so and then after that you need to find the z2 z2 will be equal to uh, the r2 prime over s plus x jx2 prime so the value is um, s is equal to 2.2 percent or 0 0.022 so you get 15.09 plus j 0 0.464 ohm okay All right and then um, this value will be parallel to the xm okay since the question doesn't give you the value of rc so rc consider negligible but you have xm so in this case the xm will be parallel to this one so xm is parallel to the z2 all right so you just uh, use your calculator to get the uh, the, the solution to get the solution to the parallel operation then you get the z naught the combination of this and this will be equal to 11.06 plus j 6.69 ohm okay and then finally the z total will be r1 plus jx1 plus the z node so this one the whole thing we consider as a z node plus jx1 plus r1 will be equal to the z total so finally the z total is 11.7 plus j 7.8 all right so once you have the z total then only you can find the i1 since i1 will be equal to the voltage supply here divided by the z total okay so i1 will be equal to 265.58 volt divided by the 11.7 plus j 7.8 so finally the stator current or the i1 will be equal to 18.88 angle of negative 33.69 degree ampere okay, so this is the value of the stator current okay so next you need to calculate the power factor so in this case power factor is equal to cos theta theta is equal to negative 33.69 so this is the angle between the current and the voltage okay so finally the power factor is given by 0 0.83 lagging okay why lagging because in this case the i lags v Okay, current lags the voltage. So, the power factor is 0 0.83 lagging. And then for the calculation of the developed and, uh, sorry, the calculation of the developed power, which is the PM, and also the output power, which is the output power, the P out. Okay, alright, so based on the, based on the circuit, okay, you can come up with the uh, power equation. Okay, so this is the power flow diagram that you can refer to. So first of all, you need to calculate the value of P in. Okay, P in happen here. P in is equal to 3 multiply with E as phase multiply with I1 cos theta. So based on the previous slide, you know the value of E as phase. You know the value of I1 based on the previous slide. Then you just uh, substitute here. You get that P in is equal to 12.5 kilowatt. Okay. Alright. And then the PSEL here, based on the power equation, you know. The formula is given by 3i squared r. In this case, i is i1, r is rs. Okay, rs or r1. Okay, so you just substitute all the value 3 multiply with 18.8x square multiply with the value of r1 or rs is given by 0 0.641. You get the stator copper losses. The losses here, the losses here is given by 0 0.7 kilowatt. Okay, all right. So, um, PC is not given in the question. So, we can consider it as uh, negligible. So, that's why the PA gap, the output here, will be equal to P in minus the losses. Okay, the PA gap will be equal to P in minus these two losses. Okay, so that's why P in minus P SEL, you get the PA gap is equal to 11.8 kilowatt. Alright. So, once you find the value of PA gap, then you can find the value of PM now. Where PM is actually represent the developed power. 
okay or mechanical power okay so for the formula of pm pm will be equal to the pa gap multiplied with 1 minus s okay so since uh, from the previous slide you already know the value of pa gap you also know the value of s the slit then you can just substitute all the value into the formula you get the pm which is the mechanical the developed power or the mechanical power is given by 11.54 kilowatt okay all right so finally for the p output okay p output will be equal to pm minus p mu based on the question the p mu given is 1100 watt okay so this value minus 1100 you get 10.44 kilowatt okay so this is the output power of the induction motor so lastly, the last question, you need to calculate the efficiency. So efficiency is given by P out divided by P in. P out is 10.44 kilowatt. P in is 12.5 K. So multiply with 100, you get 83.5%. Okay, so this is the answer of the efficiency of the induction motor. Okay. Okay, next we will see uh, on the topics on top equation. All right. Okay, so the output power of an induction motor is in the form of mechanical power. Okay, uh, you know for the induction motor, in terms of the input power, the input is the electrical power. But for the output power, is it, it is in terms of mechanical power. Okay, so that's why the you know that the mechanical power is a proportional to torque and rotational speed or the angular velocity. So that's why you have a torque equation for the induction motor. There are four types of torque that involve in the induction motor. Okay, so first we call as a starting torque. We also have a maximum torque, the mechanical torque, and also the output torque. So the general equation for the torque is given by torque is equal to P divided by omega. Okay, so the mechanical power is proportional to the torque and rotational speed. Okay, so that's why torque will be equal to P divided by omega. Okay, so in this case, uh, you can also rewrite the equation in terms of 60 multiplied with P divided by 2 pi N. Where the torque is, is in uh, the T represents the torque, which is the uh, unit is nanometer. N is a speed. Okay, it depends lah. For the starting torque, you need to use the synchronous speed. But for the output torque and also the mechanical torque, you need to use the speed of the rotor. Okay, because... Because the output happen at the rotor, the starting torque happen at the stator, so that's why you need to identify whether to use the NR or NS. Okay, it depends on the what torque need you need. All right. Okay, so the N represent the speed, P represent the power. Okay, and then omega is equal to two pi N divided by sixty radian per second. All right. So this is the general equation for the torque. Okay, so how about the equation? For each of this top, starting top, maximum top, mechanical top, and also the output top. So here, first of all, for the starting top, the starting top is actually the top that produced by the induction motor when it is started. Okay, so when we try to start, because we know that for the induction motor, it starts at the stator pipe. So the, the formula of the starting top involves of the speed of the synchronous speed. Okay, so that's why for the Starting top, the formula is K multiplied with R2 divided by R2 squared plus X squared, where your X represent X1 plus X2. Okay, how about K? K is equal to 3 multiplied with the phase voltage squared divided by omega S. Okay, so you know omega S is the uh, angular speed of the um, synchronous speed at the stator part. Alright, okay. And then next for the mechanical top. Okay, mechanical torque or we can call it as an induced torque. Okay, so the mechanical torque we measure at the rotor pipe. So that's why here, the torque of the uh, torque mechanical will be equal to the P mechanical divided by omega R. Okay, here you have omega S because it happened at the stator pipe. Here you have omega R because it happened at the rotor side. Okay, or you can also rewrite it in terms of 60 multiplied with Pm, the mechanical power divided by 2 pi and R. And R is the rotor speed. Okay. And then for the third torque, which is the output torque. Or you can call it as a load torque or shaft torque. Okay. So the formula is given by T divided by P 
uh, divided by omega. T equal to P divided by omega. Okay, so T out will be equal to P out divided by omega R. Okay, so here omega R, here also omega R. And then for the maximum torque. Okay, for the maximum torque, we can call it also as stalling, pull out or breakdown torque. Okay, so the formula for the T max is given by K divided by 2. 1 over R1 plus R1 squared plus X squared. Square root. Okay, X is given by X1 plus X2. Okay, and then the formula of K is given by this. But um, here, remember, you need to use the omega S. And then when T max happen, the S also max. Okay, the slip is maximum when the top maximum happen. So that's why usually the question will be asking you to calculate the value of the maximum slip. So you can just uh, refer to this formula in order to calculate the maximum value of the slip when the T max happen. Okay, so next we will see in details on how to use all this formula that we had learned here in the next following example. Okay. So, for example, 4.5, uh, the question is, you have a 460 volt, 25 horsepower, 60 hertz, 4 pole, y connected induction motor, has the following impedance purpose, referred to the status circuit. Okay, so, basically, all the value is same as per example 4.4 in the previous slide. Okay, alright, so basically, based on the question, you need to find the maximum torque, okay, and then you need to find the speed. And what is the slip when the maximum torque happen? And then you need to calculate the starting torque. And then finally, uh, the question asks you when the rotor resistance is double, okay, meaning that when the R1 is double, what is the speed at which the maximum torque now occurs? Okay, what is the new starting torque of the motor when the rotor resistance is double? Okay, so we will see in details on how to. Uh, justify this okay all right so the solution to the example first you need to calculate the maximum torque so this is the formula of the maximum torque that you need to memorize okay so from here you know that uh, the value of r1 r1 and then so x which is x1 plus x2 is all this thing is given but you don't know the value of k and then you need to calculate the value of k k is q equal to 3 multiply with the phase voltage squared divided by omega s Okay, so in order to calculate the value of omega s, first of all, you need to calculate the synchronous speed first. So, synchronous speed equal to 120 multiplied by frequency 60 divided by pole is 4. So, you get the synchronous speed is 1800 rpm. Okay, so based on the ns, you can calculate the omega s. So, omega s is 2 pi ns divided by 60. So, 2 pi ns is 1800 divided by 60. So, you get omega s is... 188.5 radian, radian, radius per second. Radian per second. Okay. Alright. So, and then the ES uh, phase squared. Uh, the ES phase is equal to V line to line divided by square root 3. Because uh, the induction motor is in the Y connected. So, that's why you need to divide by square root 3. So, the, v, the phase voltage is equal to 265.58 volt. Alright, finally, the value of K, K, you just substitute all this thing, all the value into the formula, then you get the K is equal to 1122.54. Okay, so based on the value of K, then you can finally calculate the value of maximum top. Okay, the formula is given by this, you just substitute all the value accordingly, so you get the maximum top is equal to 243 newton meter. Okay, so this is the T max. So next, you need to calculate what is the speed and what is the slip when the maximum torque happen. Okay, so the formula of the slip max is given by this. Okay, so you just key in all the value so you can get the slip when the ma slip max when the maximum torque happen. Okay, so the S max now, the you substitute the value of R two, R one. Okay, x is equal to x1 plus x2. So, you get that s max is equal to 0 0.196. Okay, so based on this new s, which is the maximum s, you need to calculate the rotor speed. Okay, so you know the formula of 
uh, rotor speed is equal to um, nr will be equal to ns ns minus ns divided by s okay so you get nr will be equal to ns is 1800 okay the s now the new s which is the s max is 0 0.196 multiplied with the synchronous speed ns so you get the rotor speed when the maximum torque happen is a 1447 rpm okay all right how about the starting torque okay so for the starting torque you know the formula is given by k multiplied with r2 divided by r2 squared plus x squared so you just key in all the value accordingly then you get the starting torque is equal to 144.72 nano uh, newton meter okay all right so the last question, when the rotor resistance is double, meaning that R2 is double, what is the speed at which the maximum torque now occurs? What is the new starting torque of the motor? Okay, so you know, if the rotor resistance is double, so meaning that the slip at the maximum torque is also double. Okay, so the S max new, just now you calculate the S max is equal to 0 0.196, but since the rotor resistance double, so the slip also double, so that's why 0 0.196 we, we need to multiply with 2. So now your new S max is a 0 0.392. Based on the new S max, then we can calculate the speed, the NR. Okay. So what is the speed at which the maximum torque now occurs? So the new NR will be equal to 1094 RPM. Okay. So as you can see from here, the rotor speed now is decreased. From previous slide, if you refer to the previous slide, the speed when the maximum torque happened is 1447. Okay, but when the rotor resistance is double, now the speed is reduced because the maximum torque is double. Alright. Okay, and then what is the new starting torque of the motor? So you just need to calculate it back again into the new formula okay so in this case the r2 is double so that's why you need to multiply with r r2 with 2 so 2 multiply with this 0 0.332 so here r2 also you need to double All right so finally the new starting torque is equal to 256.51 newton meter okay Okay, so now I think that's all for the topics on power flow diagram and also the thought equation. Okay, so thank you for your time. Thank you for watching my video. I'll see you in my next video. Okay, bye.